Welcome to Bible Study with Fred. I'm in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. We'll start with that. Um, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. If you would, go ahead and open your Bible to 1 Thessalonians 5 and read 1 to 5 with me. So, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. The day of the Lord is a reference to a period of time where God enacts judgment on mankind. It is a period of time, not necessarily a day with a morning and an evening. References of such a day begin in Isaiah and are found in Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Joel, Amos, and other prophets' writings. Isaiah 2.12, For the day of the Lord of, the, of hosts shall be upon every one that is proud and lofty, and upon every one that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. Isaiah 13.6, How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Verse 9, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, <clears throat> to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Isaiah 34, 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Um, let me just make a correction here. Um, I just, sometimes I see a typo and uh, I just want to get it fixed. So so this this is after the translation of the church. As Paul continues to give his statements on the end times, this is the judgment on the world that God has had his prophets predict. It is the wrath to come that we have been promised that we are delivered from and that John the Baptist warned about. Luke 3, 7. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Who's warned you to flee from the wrath to come? 1 Thessalonians 1, 10. And to wait for his son from heaven and be raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. This passage goes against those end times pundits who talk about how bad things are getting. When God's judgment descends on the earth, things will have been going pretty well for those who belong to the beast after the translation or rapture of the church age Christians. Verse 3, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. The simile as a thief in the night underscores how no one is prepared for what is to come. No one is expecting it. Further evidence that the Christian churches which are constantly expecting it and talking about it daily will be removed and not be on the scene. What is coming is a great tribulation in preparation for Christ's physical return to rule from Jerusalem. <laughs> Matthew twenty four twenty one. For then shall be great tribulation, and as as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. This puts the great tribulation as a worse disaster for humanity on earth than the great flood of Noah's time. Revelation 7, 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which come out of came out of great tribulation, and have washed their bloods, their blood, excuse me, washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Jesus himself said of this time, Matthew twenty four twenty two, and except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be short, shortened. Notice that Jesus is talking to his Jewish disciples in Matthew. There will be Jews and Gentiles who believe on Christ during the tribulation. He shortens the time for their sake. The elect is always a reference to God's people, Jewish or Gentile, and never a reference to a special group of individuals who were created to be saved, while others were created to be damned. Without going into great detail, best left left, left for a study in the book of Revelation, let me just say that Paul now exhorts the Thessalonians to not act as unbelieving Gentiles act. They are not of the night or of darkness. They are to act, not like the world, concerned with only their little plans and problems day to day, but with a greater concern as the world's end is ahead. So we're going to stop there and pick it up in verse 6. I hope that you'll read your Bible, study your Bible, cross-reference the verses, and pray to God for wisdom and understanding. Then share your interpretation with someone else. There's somebody out there who needs to hear what you have to say, what God's laid on your heart. You can purchase my comments on Amazon and or you can follow me on blogger.com. But if you watch the video so far, please click like and subscribe or follow. 
And uh, so I can get this out to more people. Thank you.